Welcome back, everyone. A little late on the release of this video. Sorry about that. Uh, kind of a few glitches, but the hard work does continue, and here is the update for what's been going on this week. Thanks for watching. Well, welcome back. Um, hope you liked the last episode where I did a little walk around here at the hangar. Uh, I'm back again, another weekend. Uh, do a little more work on the airplane. Um, let's show what I've done so far. Um, here, let's take a look. I've, I've done a few things. I, I built a box and I mounted it underneath the seat. And then I've got to put a, a lid on the seat. So here, I'll let me show you. All right, uh, this box is going to be, as you might remember from the last episode or previous episode, there's where I'm going to be sitting. This box is going to hold, let's get this cable back here. Uh, this is the cable that, oops, bang, bang, uh, operates the locking mechanism for my landing gear. And originally they come up through this god-awful hole fastened here and it goes up, down, and it's completely in the way, especially when I installed this third door here, of climbing in and out. You run the risk of banging it over and breaking it. Not happening. So, I noticed uh, some other people had relocated these cables uh, down here so that they would push, pull here. And uh, so what I need to do is just first off make sure that it uh, won't interfere. Okay. Um, I need to fasten this cable to the side of the box that I put in here so that this handle will protrude just far enough so I can grab it, pull it forward to unlock the landing gear, and then of course lower or raise the landing gear and then relock them. There'd be one on either side. So that's where the box was built so that I have something to fasten this cable to. Now I need to make a hole in the bottom of the fuselage here in the cloth to bring the cable up. But I'm not going to just make any old hole. Um, if I did that I have a fear that's this cable is going to move around in flight and start tearing the, 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 the bottom of the fuselage out. That's a bad thing. So I thought, why not put a, a, an aluminum plate uh, and, and glue it to the cloth? Bonus, that'll work. However, um, with this moving back and forth, that kind of stuff, it's still going to stress the cloth out. It's going to move it. Unlike the, uh, in the back, I installed the, uh, the transponder antenna and made a hole for the, uh, for the um, um, valve to test for water from the sump. That's just glued there, but there's no stress ever applied to that, other than maybe a little bit of wind on the tiny little antenna for the transponder, but that's negligible. That's glued to the cloth, and that's fine. So over here, where the cable is going to be coming up um, and then feeding forward, I'm thinking what I'm going to have to do is put a, 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 an aluminum plate right across from one side to the other, and then fasten it to this tube here at the very bottom and, and make it solid. Uh, I'm going to have to clean the bottom of that uh, cloth. I'm going to glue it to the, to the aluminum plate but uh, and then that aluminum plate is going to be fastened there. It doesn't have to be fastened like really strong. It just got to keep it in place. And that aluminum plate that's going across is going to have ovals, holes cut into it. Maybe just round ones. We'll, we'll see. I can do round at first, and if I have to make them oval later, I'll do that. I'll do that. But I'm going to have the holes in that aluminum plate so that this cable can come up through that plate and then get fastened to the box and then the levers and yeah. Okay, so 
sorry, rotating you guys around like that. Uh, so that's the plan for right now, is to continue on um, with that so that I can uh, get these landing gear. And, uh, and, and I also have the, um, the cable that raises and lowers the landing gear. Um, is that that part or is it the brake cable? No, it's the brake cable. I'm sorry. I have a new brake cable um, that, uh, that I've got to install because these brake cable, if you recall again uh, from the previous episode, um, it's, it's just, they're, it's not going to work. <laughs> they're too tight. Uh, if, I could ex if I could stretch them by about six inches, that'd be great, but I can't. Um, and, and the reason I, I, I need to lengthen them is because I'm going to be fastening the cable to this cable here, and already you can see it's, it's tight, you know, and yeah, it's, it's just not going to work. Not, not the way it is. It has, to be, it has to be lengthened just a little bit. So I'm going to just replace the cable and uh, new brake cables for both sides and have enough slack so that, that, it, um, that it, you know, fits. And I, and I just received those brake, that brake cable as well, so that gives me the opportunity to run that as well. So that's the plan for today. We'll see how far I get with that plan. Never know. Um, you know, there, there could be a plan B involved. Never know. <laughs> I don't know. What is plan B? Haven't got a plan B yet. Um, I'll find out when I get to it. Um, yeah. So, oops, you're looking at my shoulder there. Um, thanks for following along. I do appreciate it. And um, um, I'll, I'll say it now rather than at the end of the video. Down there is a, a, a like button. Please click the like subscribe and leave a comment any kind of comment say hello from wherever you are in the world uh, i do appreciate that um, i'm kind of curious you know who's watching and where are they from you know because more and more people seem to be watching these videos and i'm surprised <laughs> you know <laughs> quite surprised actually so uh yeah just let me know where you're from and um and if you get anything out of these uh, some people have commented that they they do get something out of this especially with the modifications um one guy already came back with my little modifications for my floats for the um uh the brake cable actually no not the brake cable the cable that raises and lowers the floats when i put that that the fuel line hose and heat shrink and clamp and so on to make it stand up and then flopping over. Um, so I'm glad I helped somebody else. So, um, uh, yeah, and if you've got suggestions, put it in the comments. Um, I, I'll, I read all the comments and, uh, and if I'll scratch my head and go, hey, that's a really good suggestion or, yeah, maybe not. So don't be offended if I don't take your suggestion. Please don't be offended by that. Um, cause Hey, it's, it's, it's a salad bar. It's, you take what you like sort of thing. Um, but it's nice to have the choice. So if you've, if you've done something, your challenge or two or any other airplane and says, Hey, you know what that would apply? Go ahead and leave it in the comments. Um, and, uh, and I will definitely read that and, and I appreciate every single one of those. So let's get on with it. Um, as Mike Patey is, uh, is, is, uh, apt to say back to work. What follows is a brief construction montage. Okay, and here we go with the narration again. And the brief construction montage. <clears throat> now, uh, what I didn't show you was me measuring and cutting a piece of aluminum, a very thin sheet of aluminum, uh, to the right width to fit at the bottom of the airplane. And uh, I figured about five inches in width uh, should be more than enough uh, for uh, for that support um, and, and for the holes to be, uh, you know, coming through the bottom of the airplane and all that. Right now what I'm doing is I'm using a file uh, to deburr it because, well, there's, there's 
sharp edges on there and sharp edges are bad uh, when you've got a cloth covered airplane <laughs> so uh, I spend uh, quite a bit of time smoothing this out with a file taking off the burrs uh, flattening it out so it looks nice and uh, and all that and I'm removing the uh, the sharp corner I'm making it round as well so I'm rounding off the corners and, and all that so that's what I'm doing here with the file and um, it takes a little bit of time but yeah, it's worth it. Um, if you're going to be doing this yourself, uh, definitely make sure that you that you smooth it off. Now, of course, you can see with my hand there, I'm running my hand across it, and if I don't cut myself wide open and bleed all over the place, then I know I've made it nice and smooth. And if you see me running for a bandage, that that's not me running for a bandage. <laughs> but if you see me running for a bandage, uh, you know that I did a poor job. But I didn't. I was running for some sandpaper. Look at that, and now I'm using some uh, some uh, sandpaper. I believe that's 240 grit. Um, no, actually, it might be uh, it might be 600. I'm not sure. Um, at any rate, uh, all I'm doing is again sanding where I was filing and making it buttery smooth, so that all that look at there we go, thumbs up. That that's right. And uh, now what I'm doing is I'm uh, I'm measuring the uh, uh, the length that I need to cut those aluminum angles and um, and just basically I'm gonna go over to a bandsaw and uh, and slice away and um, and I, I don't show that on the on the video either um, I didn't speed this one up on warp speed maybe I should have um, but uh, it, when I when I tried that uh, it, you, you really kind of missed what I was doing <laughs> so that's just me marking the lines as to where I'm going to uh, we're going to um, uh, cut that aluminum and that that piece is five inches long but it's not perfectly five inches long because it was a scrap piece and it was five inches at one end and it's four and seven eighths at the other so what I did was I marked a number one and a number two on these pieces and of course here you can see I, I cut under the bandsaw and here I go again with a file and rounding the corners making a nice and smooth and, and round and no sharp edges and removing all the burrs and whatnot uh, on this aluminum angle uh, very important to do that uh, take your time uh, and and make sure that uh, you've got nice nice smooth edges uh, nothing sharp uh, that'll that'll cut into this and um, I also am going to use uh, flush rivets on this uh, and I'm going to use uh, solid rivets I'm not using um, uh, pop rivets or cherry rivets actually uh, I'm going to be using solid rivets on this because they're just a lot stronger and uh, and I got a lot of them so I might as well start using some of them and um, uh, yeah I, I actually like the 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 way a solid rivet uh, um, it just it's just more secure um, uh, they say that the uh, solid, uh, the comparison to solid and uh, and a, a, a blind rivet or cherry rivet, um, when you compare the strength, uh, that the cherry rivets and the blind rivets are only about um, sixty percent as strong as a uh, as a solid rivet. And uh, there you go. I, I gave you a thumbs up a few seconds ago. Don't know if you noticed that, but uh, now here I am with that uh, that six hundred grit, uh, making it really buttery smooth, taking those uh, little sharp edges uh, from the file uh, off the aluminum to make it smooth. And um, and I think I'm, I'm I'm just about done with that. Yeah, I am. So we're gonna close off the narration, I believe. And yep, thumbs up. It's all buttery smooth. And uh, here is a, a, a trial fit, a test fit to see uh, that I uh, that I cut it the right length, and uh, then I'm going to be putting one of the angles on one of the sides, uh, and then uh, matching it on the other side. And well, I'll stop to yakking, and um, uh, you've heard me enough now. <laughs> and back to the normal, regularly scheduled programming, or. Or sort of. Uh, no, not yet. We had a lot more to go. Oh my! I'm just looking down the the timeline of the video. There's an awful lot going on here. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, let's carry on. Wow. Um, I don't even know what I'm doing with this video. See, that's an amateur for you. <laughs> So right now what I'm doing is I'm marking where I'm going to drill the holes and boom, I have the holes drilled and I'm just deburring them. Isn't that fast? I'm so fast drilling holes that it happened in a blink of an eye. <laughs> there was no editing there at all. That was all live action. Yeah, liar.
<laughs> so uh, what I'm putting on the drill right now is a countersink tool uh, or bit um, that I'm going to uh, use to uh, to create a, a flush for um, um, a countersink for the uh, for the solid rivets and and then I, of course I, I test them I put a solid ribbon in there and I check make sure it's nice and smooth that it's not too deep and um, and yeah and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to match drill the holes in the aluminum plate and I'm going to use a dimpler now I don't know if you can see on the bench I've got uh, the the hand squisher for the solid rivets you can also buy dimpling attachments that will um, will uh, uh, dimple the uh, the aluminum and it'll fit into the countersunk hole that you make and there you go I'm, I'm now I'm going to dimple and uh, squeeze it with a dimpler and I shall see dimples dimples and uh, and those will then fit nicely into the countersunk hole in the in the aluminum angle I'm just putting a couple of, uh, of Clicos in there to hold them in place and put the first solid rivet in uh, well not quite yet I gotta line it up properly <laughs> so uh, this this is normal you put things together you take them apart three dozen times before you actually finish with it um, but yeah, that's that's what's happening here. Is I'm uh, I'm dimpling and uh, and there we go. There's the first rivet squished. Down she goes and check it. And yeah, I don't use a gauge. Uh, I used to use a gauge every single time. I don't use a gauge uh, that much anymore. You can pretty well tell that uh, that the rivet has been properly squished. And um, and um, since this is not structural, it's it's not that critical. Um, but there we go. Anyways, that's it for the narration part. Uh, I am definitely coming to the close of this brief construction montage, and um, I will um, see you in a minute. We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. Okay, let's uh, take a look what I've done here so far. Here's the plate. I riveted the one aluminum angle. Can we see that on the camera? No, I think we can. Right there. And it's now pushed up against that small tube. It's right up this piece right here, the aluminum. And this side here is now pushed up against Let's see if we can see that. And I've marked where the holes have to be so that this aluminum angle will then rivet onto this tube here. So, um, this is going to have a hole drilled here and one about here where the cable comes up and then of course gets fastened to the side of the box. So let's uh, let's get that part done. Okay, uh, I decided just to push on fast and try to get as much as I could get done as as quickly as possible. This is what's happened so far. Let's take a look down here. Okay, the aluminum plate is in place, and there's the angle pieces that will be screwed into the tube and you notice there's holes here where the uh, the landing gear locking cable will come up that's a one and one eighth inch hole and right now I've uh, I've glued it to the cloth using plyo bond um, I, uh, I cleaned the cloth first because it had oils that kind of stuff on there I cleaned it uh, <laughs> probably seven or eight times uh, first with degreaser and then uh, about three times with um, with uh, MEK which really strips grease off boy that stuff is amazing and uh, so that's that's dry and clean the cloth and I also washed the uh, the aluminum with MEK so everything was 100% clean and dry I applied plyo bond to the cloth as you can see and to the uh, to the aluminum plate and it's in place now I'm going to screw the uh, angles 
or rivet the angles to that tube once it cures, once the plyo bond is cured, which I'm going to give it 24 hours or more to cure. The reason for that is I don't want this plate to protrude or, or stick down and you'll see a ridge underneath. I want it to be as, as smooth as possible. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be uh, waiting till it relaxes and uh, is nice and smooth. Then I'll drill my two holes there and two holes there in, into the, uh, the tube and, uh, and rivet them in place and we're done. And then uh, after it's, uh, it's cured, then I cut the holes bring the cables up and fasten them to the, the seat. Uh, I have the uh, new brake cables. Oh, let's turn this around. As I mentioned earlier, so yeah, um, that's as much as I'm going to get done today. Whew! MEK and plyo bond. <laughs> it's a good thing it's a big hanger and the fans are running because, uh, boy, you need the ventilation. Um, I'm going to pack it in for right now. And I will come back. So I'm going to end this episode here right now. It's uh, uh, a little short, I think. We'll see what happens when I get into the editing. Uh, thank you very much for all those people who are subscribing. I just uh, I noticed as of uh, about mid January, I'm uh, 112 subscribers. <laughs> um, that's that's a lot more than I expected um, in this tiny little channel. Um, but hey, you know what, if, if you're getting something out of this, if you're learning something, uh, that's, that's excellent. And I'm learning things too. Uh, I'm getting suggestions coming in and, uh, and some of them I follow, like I mentioned earlier before. So, um, let's close it off. I, I was going to put the lid on the, uh, the back seat here as well, only I don't have a, a piano hinge for this. Well, actually, I do have a piano hinge, but I'm reserving it because right now I have all the materials I need and uh, uh, and such to make the uh, the one door that's going to open up for the windshield. But because this plane is on floats, as you can see, it might it might be that I've got a dock on the left hand side, which is odd because my fuel is fuel is on the right side, but occasionally you're going to have to dock and get in on the left side and I thought you know what if I'm going to you know yeah let's uh, let's make two so I'm going to hinge the uh, the windshield twice there will be a left and a right so it'll be a four door a four door airplane <laughs> and um, uh, so I bought materials tubing and that sort of stuff to get that done um, whether I do it right away or I wait till next fall after the flying season is over to do that. We'll see. I'm going to fly it with one, with the one door on the right side first. Um, but I do have that one piano hinge that I'm saving for the left door. I might just sacrifice it and put it on the seat. I don't know. Or just order another piano hinge. It doesn't have to be a fancy piano hinge. Aluminum. I, 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 you know what? I, I, I think the local hardware store even carries it. It might be pre-drilled with holes, but pff, yeah, whatever. It's 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 the flap of hinge for the, the seat. It's not structural at all. It just holds the seat pan in place. Uh, so I'll think about it, and uh, you will be the first to know other than me. So thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all the comments, and I appreciate all the support that I've been getting. Um, I've been getting a lot of support. I'm, I'm very, very happy with that. And... Uh, so um, follow your dreams, people. Just follow your dreams. And, uh, and uh, we're all in this together, this flying thing anyways, and even the other stuff, the electronic stuff. Yeah. Or oh, maybe. Anyways, <laughs> whatever, I'm rambling now. Yeah, thank you very much. God bless you all, and keep your stick on the ice. Bye-bye for now. Keep those cards and letters coming. Thanks for watching. Appreciate every one of you. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you again in the hangar. Bye-bye.